So you can think of OpenAI as a, as a product and research company. Uh, we build awesome models. What are some of the best ways to apply them to solve the biggest problems that humanity faces? And so there's this uh, deployment pipeline. Logan and I sit at the end of this deployment pipeline. We work with uh, people in the real world that are using OpenAI's models. We spend our time thinking about what are some of the best ways to use our models? What are some of the hardest problems that haven't been solved yet? And how can we apply uh, OpenAI technology to solve these? Um, I'm on the apply team, and I'm an engineer. And I do developer relations stuff, so helping people build fun and exciting uh, products and services using our using our API. So, yeah, folks saw from the title of the talk, uh, we'll we'll talk about multimodal stuff. But I think it's important to start off with with where we are today. And I think you know, as as we all know, people who have been building in the AI space for the last six, twelve, eighteen months. Um, 2023 has really been the year of chatbots, and I think it's, uh, it's been incredible to see how much people have actually been able to do, how much value you can create in the world with like, just a simple chatbot. Um, and it's, it still blows my mind to think about how rudimentary these systems are and how much more value there's going to be created um, in the next year, in the next decade. Um, and that's why I'm excited for 2024, which I think is, is really going to be the, I don't know if I can trademark this, but the year of multimodal models. Um, it's a tongue twister, but also hopefully the domain is available, yearofmultimodals.com. Um, no, don't, don't buy it if it's available. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. We, you know, OpenAI has a ton of multimodal capabilities that are, that are in the works. Um, some folks might have already tried some of these in ChatGPT and the iOS app or the, the web app today. Things like uh, vision, taking in images, describing them. Um, we'll, we'll show that later on. Um, also, the ability to generate images. We've had this historically with, with Dolly 2, but uh, Dolly 3, really, if, if folks have tried it, it, it takes things to the next level. So excited to, to show some of that today as well. Cool. So if you, if you think of uh, the way that multimodal capabilities are working right now, uh, it's a little bit of a, of a setup of islands, where we have DALI that takes text and generates images. We have Whisper that takes in audio and, ge and generates text, transcripts. Uh, we have GPTV with vision capabilities, g with vision capabilities that takes images and text and can reason over both at the same time. Um, but right now, these this are all very disparate things. Uh, a, however, you can think of text as a connective tissue between all of these models. A, and there's a lot of interesting things that, that uh, we can build right now uh, a, using that paradigm. But what we're actually really excited for is uh, a future in which there's unity between all these modalities. And, a, and this is where we're going. This is not where we're today. Uh, but you can, you can think of models in the same way that like GPT can consume uh, images and text simultaneously. Uh, maybe in the future, we'll consume even more modalities, and we'll output even more modalities, and we'll be able to reason about them in the, at the same time. However, we're not there yet. And so uh, today, Logan and I are going to show you just like some, some uh, architecture patterns and some ways in which you can uh, mimic this kind of situation with what we have available today. Uh, and, and, and some of the patterns that you can start to think about as we move towards this future in which models can uh, reason way beyond text. As Simone and I were, were making these demos today, um, waiting till the, the last minute, as, as always, it, it was really interesting to see that like, really much of the work of making multimodal systems today is like, how do you hook everything up together and connect the different modalities? And again, as Simone said, using text as sort of the, the bridge between different modalities. Um, but it, it's going to be super interesting to see like, how much developer efficiency gains there are when you no longer have to do that. And you really just have like, a single model that can do text in, text out, video at some point, you know, speech in, speech out at some point. Um, so it, it'll be super cool to, to see when that's possible and uh, make, make making demos even, uh, even easier and simpler. Cool. All right, well, uh, we'll show you guys two demos today. Uh, and we'll talk about like, some, some high level ideas and some high level concepts. Uh, and hopefully, at the end of it, you'll, you'll be inspired to think about like, what, what are some of the things that 
uh, maybe you're not able to build today, but you'll be able to build uh, six months, a year from now, uh, and how you should start thinking about your products uh, um, uh, as they are able to incorporate more uh, modalities. Cool, so on to demo number one. Uh, this is a, it's a, it's a very, very simple DALI vision loop. Um, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Um, excited to, to look at this demo. So Simone will, will pull up the demo and I'll, I'll sort of just walk through it. But the basic idea is let's take a real image. Um, let's use GPT-V um, or GPT-4 with, with image inputs to essentially create a nice human uh, readable, understandable description of that image. Um, and then we'll put that into Dolly 3 and actually go and generate a synthetic version of that image. Um, so this whole pipeline takes a little bit to run because uh, it's not a production um, system at the moment, uh, but the nice part is uh, we've got a couple of examples ready and we can, if you wanna kick one off live as well, <laughs> we can cool. let it okay. run in the background. <laughs> so very, very, this is a, a fun, simple idea, but uh, the, this is a, a photo that I took in the lobby downstairs, uh, just when you walk into the, the hotel. Uh, there are these uh, kind of like uh, Halloween themed painted ladies. Um, uh, and so what we did here is that we asked uh, GPT-4 with vision to describe this image in detail. Uh, and then we asked it to uh, generate uh, a description for DALI to uh, generate a new image based on this. Um, uh, you can see it, it does an okay job. Here's a description of the image. Here's the prompt it uses. Uh, it, it picks up on a lot of details, like the, the RIP in the tombstone and the old dogs. Uh, welcome, uh, I think here, and then it generates a whole new image. But there's a lot of details that are off, you know, like the the, um, the marble is black, and the uh, the spiders are white. And, and so what we do next is that we pass the yeah, it's close enough. Close. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we give the two images to GPT with vision again, um, and we ask it to compare them uh, and see what are some of the differences. And uh, it. it picks up on a lot of the, the different details. And then we ask it to create a new, a new image based on these uh, differences. And it goes ahead, new image, you see. <laughs> uh, all the black marble is gone. The spider is now larger <laughs> and black. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it, it matches something closely. And I think this, this is just to illustrate, I think there's a long way to go, but this is to illustrate the idea that there are plenty of tasks that we do right now in AI where we, we need the human in the loop to be able to evaluate a visual output that a model produces, compare it with something else, then like iterate on the instructions, pass that again to another model. And so th that, that's a pipeline where we like thought that humans were very essential and that we're probably gonna continue to be essential for some time. And now that's something that the models can do by themselves. Um, and there's a couple of, uh, of uh, interesting uh, the, the patterns here. I think, I think one of them is, Describing images, that's powerful, because now you have an image, you, now you have text, and you can reason about that text. You can do a lot of things with that text. But another really powerful element is uh, comparing images um, and, and, and spotting differences, like having like a final destination that you want to get to and like a current destination. And, and, and that pattern of comparing things, you can apply to a lot of things. So imagine uh, Token and I were, Logan and I were just chatting about like some other like ways that you can apply this. And, and, and uh, Logan's idea was, imagine you are uh, curating uh, your room and you're, you just moved to a new place. Uh, and you're on Instagram, you find some images of like a vibe that you like, and, and like maybe some object, and, and then you can grab that image, you can give that to GPT-4 with vision, and you can tell like, okay, now like, like crawl through Amazon and find like all the lamps that match this vibe that I want for my room. Um, I want this so badly. This yeah, and, so and, cool. and so. <laughs> I can't do interior design, so it's like I, I would love to be able to just be like, get me all the stuff that matches this specific vibe. It's, yeah. it's a, a hard problem right now. Yeah. Um, and a couple. Uh, Simone, can I make one other quick comment? Which is sure. just, I, I think also, you know, folks were were laughing, you know, in, in good jest when this when this third image came up. Came up. I think it's important to know that there's there's like no prompt engineering or anything like that that's happening. This is like the the rawest output that you can get. This is a, a one hour demo version, so people can uh, will hopefully go wild with this once it's available through the API and like ideally get much better results than than we're seeing today. Um, yeah. Yeah. probably using a bunch of techniques that other people talked about at the conference so far. So this is the, the very basic version of, of this demo. Yeah, and, and we wanted to keep it simple and minimal just to illustrate the, the, the power of the models. This is as raw as you can get when it comes to the models. That like, 
there is almost all the completion output is going straight into the model, and, and I think there's like 50 lines of code. So like the majority of the power lifting is being done by the models here. Um, um, another quick example that I'll show you guys, and then I'll try to do one live, uh, which will probably uh, be tragic. But uh, <laughs> um, so this is this is the backstage right here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just took this photo right before walking on stage. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, GPT with Vision does a really good job actually of describing that. Uh, the, there's the monitors and there's boxes and there's cables and there's whatnot. Uh, uh, and then this is the image that DALI generates, DALI 3. Uh, so you can see blue carpet, cables, boxes, lots of elements. And then it goes on to spot the differences and it notices, for example, that in this image there are all these vertical lights that are not present in the first image. It says that here, uh, lighting, like all this like vertical lights on the walls and ceilings which adds a uh, but then it rewrites the prompt and it gets rid of all the vertical lights. <laughs> and, it get, and, it, and it adds the, uh, the curtain in the back, which wasn't present here, but it's present in the, the black curtain here. Um, so little, little, just little interesting things. It's still a long way to go, but like, uh, this, this, new, this, whole new, this opens a whole new box of interaction patterns, the, the, the fact that now you can reason visually. Um, cool, and, and let's give a shot to a, a live example. So this. Uh, this was a, a trail run that I did over the weekend uh, up in Parisima Woods. Um, and so I'm just going to do it from scratch. Um, hope that it works. <laughs> Want to go to another? There you go. <laughs> uh, cool. So the image depicts a, a serene and picturesque woodland setting. Uh, the focus of the image is a wooden boardwalk or a footbridge that winds through the dense forest. Uh, very detailed description, light filters through the trees. <laughs> uh, and I'm just passing that raw just straight to Dali. Yeah, and if, if folks have seen what happens in the, the Dali uh, mode in the ChatGPT iOS app, for example, it's actually doing a little bit, I, I don't uh, know off the top of my head like what the prompt is for that, but it's, it's doing some amount of prompt engineering. Like if folks have actually tried to use like our labs product before to make Dali images, you have to do that prompt engineering yourself. Um, and I think that's been one of the limitations, like if people used Midjourney or, or other, um, other image models in the past, like it's just kind of hard to make good prompts that work well for these systems. So it's nice that the uh, the model can can take a stab at doing it for you. It's telling us a lot of how the the second image is a lot more beautiful and more detailed, <laughs> <laughs> which checks out. It's, it's also interesting to see, uh, just for folks to, to think about, it's interesting to see that like, it's still of these um, image models. Like The main limitation, as we're seeing oh, this no. demo in real time, is actually, <laughs> no. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> we're going back to the slides. Next, go back to slides. We're, we're gonna, you know, All right. Time. I'm gonna leave it running, and then at, at the time if we if we have time, it'll probably work the second round. It worked that's the three works. times before this. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. For the second demo, um, a, we're gonna take it a little bit further, and we're gonna do something uh, with video. A, and the idea here is that. There's a lot of video summarization demos out there that we've seen. Uh, the majority of them just take a transcript and then uh, ask GPT-4 to summarize this transcript. However, videos have a lot of uh, information in them that is conveyed visually. And so uh, what we're doing here is that we're taking frames from the video, um, and then we're asking GPT-4 with vision to describe all the frames, and then we are asking Whisper to transcribe the video. And now we have this long, textual representation of the video that not only includes all the audio information, but also includes visual information from the video. And then we're doing some exciting like mixes on that uh, that Logan will tell you about. Yeah, I'm ready for the next slide. 
Um, yeah, so for, for this demo, we're literally just taking the GPT-4 introduction uh, video if folks have seen on YouTube. It's a good video if you haven't seen it before. Um, so taking the video raw from YouTube. Next slide. Uh, taking the video raw from YouTube, again, like Simone said, cutting up those, uh, the different frames from the video, putting those into to GPT-4 with image input, getting the summaries, which you can see, and I know it's really hard, um, but literally just like actually saying what's, th these are simple images, so it's easy to capture the, the depth of what's shown here. Um, taking those images and then going to the next piece, which is essentially a big, Another, another wonderful Dali image, but a big description of, uh, of the transcript and then all the image, essentially like image embeddings is the, is the easiest way of thinking about it. So if you wanna actually see the results of this, QR code bottom right hand corner is real. Um, you can scan it and see the resulting article. It's, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, it does a good job and I think for, for me, you know, why this is exciting is because you can sort of capture the, again, capture the depth of, uh, of what happens in a video. So a dolly image to start, and then a bunch of actual frames that like match up with the contextual representation of what's being talked about in the blog post. Um, and again, there's no hand, I, I couldn't open source the code because it has a bunch of unreleased APIs, but no, no sort of magic behind the scenes stuff that's happening. This is like a raw, crappy prompt um, to generate this, uh, this blog post, which I think is, again, I think it's really cool and um, takes videos and, and makes them more accessible in, in, the, in the text form. So I like it. Cool. Let's see if this finished. No. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, so some, some uh, concluding takeaways. Um, a start thinking multimodal. Uh, that's, that's something that new that's, that's happening these days. And, and if you have any crazy ideas that you think, wow, it would be really cool if, if technology could do this, uh, we'll probably be able to get there. And, and the products that you'll be able to build six months from now, a year from now, are going to be incredible. So start having this in mind as, as, as people who are building AI products and people who are building companies. Um, Think of text as a, as a connecting tissue right now. And, and I think this is a very powerful concept. And that's going to continue to be the case for the near future. Uh, a, and there are many powerful patterns that are yet to be explored when it comes to multimodal stuff, especially when it comes to, to uh, doing things with images. Uh, so really excited to uh, soon get this in the hands of all of you guys and, and to see what you all build with this. I think it's, uh, it's really exciting uh, to see uh, AI start to venture into the visual world. Yeah, agents with image input is gonna be sick. I can't wait. I feel like so much of the internet is, requires that. Yeah, and we're excited. I think there's, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen in the, in the near future, and um, I think it's cool to be able to hopefully get a glimpse of, of what some of those use cases look like. So anything else you wanna say, Simone? That's good. All right, this is yeah. wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you all.